Alright, hello guys. In today's video, we're going to be talking about an early look at September. In this video, I'm not going to be bringing you a forecast, but I will be bringing you the data that I will be using for my forecast, including model data and as well as some analog years that I'm going to be using. Now, these might not completely resemble my final forecast, but they are the data that I'm using again. So don't hold me to these as these are only part of the equation. But before I get started with the video, though, I would ask you to subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description for my social media. So we're going to get right into things here. And first off, we're looking at our CFS model again for the month of September and you can see it does have some warmer temperatures there for the western United States but there is some cold sprinkled in as well so it's gonna probably be kind of a flip floppy pattern out there according to this model that's what we're seeing right now but you can see that most of the cold as it has been for months and months and months now is located over the Dakotas, Nebraska, Kansas, Wyoming those areas that's where the cold looks to be centered it does extend east a bit into some of the Great Lakes states, but once you get to the coast, it's more averaged out or, or flip-floppy, just like the West Coast where there's some warm, some cold. So this one has more of a central United States cold for the month of September. This is pretty realistic if you ask me, and it's kind of like what we saw last September actually. So we'll keep an eye on this one. The CFS model, it usually shows a little bit too much warmth and isn't really accurate because of that but this one does not look too warm it actually looks pretty reasonable for the month of September uh, and it actually looks a lot like what we've had the past few months like I said so this you know I, I wouldn't rule this one out uh, to look pretty close to what my final forecast is going to be because it actually is pretty close to what I'm thinking as of right now now here's your CANSIPS model which is the Canadian uh, monthly model or seasonal model and you can see that it has a lot of warmth there, actually, for the same reasons that the CFS was just showing the cold. So this is where we get the confusion. The CFS is a little bit better than the CANSIPS, in my opinion, uh, if not a lot better. But we are going to take a look, and we will kind of take this one into consideration as well. But in the northwest, we have above average temperatures into some of those north central United States. Uh, and then some of the northern four corner states as well, we do have some above average temperature anomalies. But you can see there is some cold there for Southern California and portions of Arizona and New Mexico. And then we have a little bit of cold trying to trying to show up there for Oklahoma, Arkansas, into some of the Gulf states uh, and maybe even the East Coast states with those little bit of cold temperatures offshore. So we'll have to see how this one updates. Uh, or actually, this one only updates once a month. So we will see in a long time. Uh, once it's too late, we'll see what this one wants to show. So anyway, yeah, this was the CANSIPS model, and it's kind of the opposite of what the CFS was showing actually, which is kind of interesting. But nevertheless, again, we do take all models into consideration just because you never know which one's going to be right. But I'm doubtful that this one will even resemble what the final forecast will be or exactly what happens. Now, we're also going to look at our European seasonal model. And you can see there in the Pacific Northwest, we do have some slightly above average temperature anomalies as well as on the West coast of the United, or sorry, the Northwest, we have above average anomalies and on the East coast as well. Uh, we do have some above average anomalies, basically from the Great Lakes and the Gulf States eastward. So the entire East coast, we do have some slightly above average temperature anomalies. And this one is kind of an ensemble, I believe. So it is kind of averaging out a lot. That's why we're seeing not a lot of differences in the temperature anomalies, but you can kind of peek at what they're trying to call for, but it will probably be more, uh, potent than what it's showing but they do have the cold temperatures there for South Dakota Kansas and Nebraska which is going to be interesting and that'll likely uh, lead to a little bit more cold than what this is showing and actually this does agree with the CFS model obviously because it, it does look quite a bit like the CFS at least with the placement of the cold and then the placement of the two warm areas this is pretty similar and I would say that um, again yeah they correlate so if this happens both of them would be right which is leads me to believe that they're right even more considering two different models are showing it and the, you know the European model is a pretty good model so uh, we always take that one into consideration now here is your temperature anomalies for September of 2009 so you can see that there was a lot of cold in the east but 
What I mostly want to look at is that there was cold in South Dakota, Kansas, and Nebraska because that's what our models are showing as well. Actually, very cold temperatures for those regions, especially Kansas and Missouri, actually, uh, where we saw temperature anomalies as cold as, as far below average as 22 degrees below average. Uh, we also saw some pretty cold temperatures there for Georgia, South Carolina, into North Carolina, into Virginia. Uh, that's where we saw really below average temperatures. But really, if you're in the green at all, this year, in 2009, September of 2009, you were 8 degrees or more below average, which is far below average already. But there was some areas that were even further than that, even double that. So very, very interesting. We did have some, in general, warmer temperatures than average from North Dakota westward and four corner states westward. But there was some colder areas. As you can see, Idaho and Montana, we also had below average anomalies and uh, actually pretty close to the coast there in Northern California and Oregon and Washington. We had slightly below average anomalies in Northern California. We actually had temperatures as far as 8 to 12 degrees below average up there. So it can be pretty cold right up there against the coast, which is pretty darn interesting if you ask me that it's only cold right up there against the coast. Now, we're also going to look at 2004, uh, September of 2004. And this year actually is the most similar anomaly as far as sea surface temperatures are concerned. But I don't think that this temperature uh, pattern will actually set up here. I do like that it's showing the cold in the central regions. But I think that, um, again, obviously Kansas, Nebraska, and South Dakota will most likely be below average. That seems to be the most... Uh, the thing that I'm most sure of with the September forecast so far. But we do have below average temperatures there for North Dakota, Minnesota, into Wisconsin, and some of those Great Lakes states, and then down south into Kentucky, Tennessee, basically that Mississippi uh, River g general area. And then f for Texas and New Mexico and Oklahoma as well, we are looking at below average temperature anomalies. Up against the coast, you can see it's more averaged out with some of those blues and some of those yellows. It'll most likely come in around average with this year. Um, in 2004, that's, we would call that average just cause it's so close. But again, most of the Western United States and central United States were above average, which I do, which I don't think is going to really be even close to what we see this year at all. Now for our final anomaly, we have 2014, September of 2014. And you can see this year, uh, it's kind of interesting because it does have some of those colder temperatures for North or South Dakota and can or in Nebraska. Kansas is above average actually, but it's coming from the west. I, I don't think this is a look that we will see. This actually looks a lot like what we're going to see coming up soon for the Pacific Northwest as far as the temperature pattern actually. Uh, this actually looks like a lot like a lot of this August is looking, but again we. In this frame, we have above average temperatures for Texas, New Mexico, into Kansas and Oklahoma. We're not going to see above average temperatures in Kansas this September, I believe. Uh, I think that that's going to be really where our trough sets up. And then the Great Lakes states, I think they might be below average as well. And then the East Coast, I can't really complain about that. I do think it's possible the East Coast sees some warmer than normal temperatures. And then obviously it's showing colder than normal temperatures sandwiched in there. Uh, I don't think that'll happen either, but in, in general, I don't agree with this one. This one probably looks the least similar to what I'm thinking and what the models are thinking. I think that uh, all of these, all of these anomalies I'm, I'm showing you or these analogs I'm showing you, but none of them look actually exactly like what I would say this year is going to look. I think that 2009 was the closest, but I don't think it's going to be that cold over the Eastern United States. I don't think it's going to be, yeah, I don't think the cold's going to arrive that strong this early on, but it is possible, uh, but I think with the placement of the cold, that one's the most realistic, but again, I think the East Coast, it could be tapered back a little bit. I think that we could see some average or warmer than average temperatures up against the coast. That's what I'm thinking right now um, for this year so far. Anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoy this video. Uh, I was able to just bring the data to the table. This isn't any, like I said, this isn't a forecast at all. This is just the data that I have right now for September. And then I'm kind of breaking it down with some early thoughts. But in general, uh, you know, again, don't hold me to this one because this is just the model data and just the analogs. Uh, I do think that the only thing that I'm thinking right now that I'm calling for is the colder than normal temperatures for 
Nebraska, South Dakota, and Kansas. But again, that could even change in the next 15 days as we approach September. And then when I make my forecast, that'll be my final thoughts. That's the one you can hold me to. But as of right now, I just wanted to show you guys the data that I'm working with and kind of break down what I'm looking at this early on. Just so you guys kind of get an idea of what goes into the monthly and seasonal forecasting uh, on my part. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this entire video. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Have a great week. Have a great day. And have a great September. See you guys later.